TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But, uh, but you can still leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. If we go live and you happen to miss it, just go to twitch.com, type in my username. And as you can see, <coughs> past, present, all the, all the they're all here. Don't forget we do got Patreon as well. We post Monday through Friday. We're going to be watching Shameless soon. We already started Shameless, matter of fact. As you can see, uh, W Show. <laughs> Don't forget, we do got merch as well, man. The link to all of this is down below in the description. This right here is from, I ain't going to say this because YouTube be tripping. Wait, give me a second. I'll say it in. Okay, Murder Up Close is the name of this channel. I am subbed, I think. Go ahead, hit that like button. This is called the WhatsApp Perv. I've had this to watch in my um, watch next for like a week. I don't know why I haven't watched it. Oh, I was sick. I had the flu. But I wanted to have like, I want to watch it now because I'm, I'm feeling better. So I feel like I'm going to comment a lot on this. It's a All crazy over Britain, name. A new breed of detective is at the forefront of the battle against a rising tide of serious crime. Their work often goes unseen. But with extraordinary access, we go behind closed doors with Lancashire's top police investigators as they attempt to solve some of the most mystifying and horrifying offences. Police emergency. Please hurry up. Stabbed him. Scared. These specialist detectives use the most modern techniques. We need to get him as fast as possible because we want to get him forensically examined. Forensic, to deal with today's yeah. serious <sighs> crimes, such as date rape. You're under arrest on suspicion of rape. And when a young man is stabbed. It's a tragic thought for us to have, really, about what's happened to Martin in these final uh, minutes. They hunt for a killer on the run. So the plan moving forward now is for us to have a manhunt. Please! This is the inside story of how Lancashire's major investigation team brings some of the UK's most dangerous criminals to justice. You've been arrested on the off ourselves and special murder. The Texas inside major crime. Okay. Talk to me. <coughs> Excuse me. This emergency, what's your emergency caller? My friend's just been raped. Has it just happened? Um, when did it happen? Half an hour ago. I'm prioritising yep. it. She's going to get patrol straight over. Detective Sergeant Sherilyn Melton visits the home of the victim, the crime scene, for the first time. Her account is that she met the suspect on her dating website, plentyfish.com. They've been chatting on um, an app called WhatsApp. Been... The hours on Poof. Poof. I remember when Poof could go rival for rival with Tinder. If you wanted some late night meow, you get up on Poof and it could happen. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, my bad. They arranged to meet for the first time and she's given her address and her contact number to the suspect. Why would you do that? The scene, in particular, is the bedroom upstairs, which is the double bedroom. It's a two-bedroomed house, and um, it's, the, it's the master bedroom where the offence has taken place. They've come in, they've had a few drinks in here. He's started to touch her um, over clothing on the settee, okay. and then she's gone upstairs to go to the toilet, and he's followed her upstairs to go to the toilet, and then he, he's dragged her into the bedroom where the offence has taken place. The crazy camera view. W cameraman. One of the reasons why we're seizing this bedding is because we will be making an arrest. And he may DNA. deny that he's actually even been in the bedroom. So forensically, we need to link him into this scene. So at this stage, this is why we're seizing as much forensic opportunity as we can to put him in the house and put him in particular in this bedroom. Facts. Y'all could probably take the cup too. We got to... 
saliva on that. The beer can. The victim has been to the hospital where she's been forensically examined. She's described that she's been anally and vaginally raped, so it's key that we what, get... Wait, what kind? And she's described that she's been anally and vaginally raped. Wow. Both sites? So it's key that we get her to the hospital and examined, which we have done. And we are currently, as we speak, obtaining her evidence by way of interview. That's so we're able to get a very detailed account of what's happened to her last night. We were just talking and then all of a sudden he grabbed me and he just started kissing me, but he were being nice about it at first. He jumped up in front of me and he put his arms under my legs and pulled me forward. So I kind of like slouched back onto the sofa and he leant on top of me and started kissing me again. I said, you know, you've got the wrong impression of me. I said, I don't want anything to happen. Okay. No, no, he's wrong. He's bogus. He should not have done that. He should be prosecuted the full length of the law. But at the same time, young lady, <coughs> you invited a random man that you met on poof to your house and then told him he had the wrong impression of you? I get it. He, he, that ain't what you wanted. But don't invite that man to your house then. The house is for SEX. Invite me to the movies then. Don't don't tell me you come to the house because all I might think is Netflix and chill. In 2023, not me personally. I'm talking like that's probably what he, like, you know. But no, he was bogus. No means no and stop is stop. But if you don't have no intention of giving nobody nothing, nothing, don't invite him to your house. That go both ways. Don't invite that girl to your house if you don't plan on giving up that that woody woodpecker. And don't invite that, that man to your house if you don't plan on giving up that meow. Because that's the, that that's that's how things get confused. It pushed my face into him and he was killing <coughs> me again and he's strong, he was so strong. The victim's been telling him no, but he's continued to um to to forcibly yeah, rape no means the victim, no, no. despite a pleading for him to stop and crying. She's managed to get out of the um, bedroom and go downstairs. She's obviously frightened, but she's managed to get him to leave the address, to which he has done, and basically he made some comments to her same time next week and slammed the door. The fact that oh, the no, suspect is wild. still on the loose means he could return and strike again. Same time next week, he a wild it boy. It makes you panic, especially when you've got a child here where you're, and you're on your own. And you feel vulnerable anyway, obviously, after what's just happened. You don't... I'm sorry, you have a child at your home that you invited a man you met off poof to? Feel strong anymore. He's still wrong. You don't feel I'm like you saying, can protect like, your child anymore. There's a lot of dumb stuff that happened leading up to this. And I'm not willing to sweep under the rug. Mm -hmm. We know that this, the victim and the suspect met through social media. So, as we all know, through media, you leave a, you leave a footprint. <coughs> um, so that's what's been able to um, lead us to who he is. Yeah, Sherilyn Melton 100%. and her team are now looking to arrest a 26-year-old man called Scott Lazenby. The victim has been able to give us specific details regarding his description. Not crazy. We have identified the potential suspect who's over in Salford. So we're so going to go and affect that arrest now. Hopefully he's in, and hopefully everything can go to plan and we can arrest him. If not, through local intelligence, I am aware I'm aware of his employment. I know where he works. Um, Let's get negative. Let's pull up to his job and read his charges out loud at his job. I've got mobile number that I can link to him. So if we can't find him at the address today, then there's, there's a backup plan. Where's the entrance into it? Doesn't make it easy with being in an apartment, does it? It's going to be the eighth floor. <coughs> Hi, this is a message for Scott. Uh, my name's Sherilyn Melton. I'm one of the sergeants over in the uh, police station at Blackburn. 
I'm actually at your flat, Scott, so I need to speak to you. Um, if you can either open the door or if you can come back to the flat. So I'm going to ring you back again in a couple of minutes and if you can pick the phone up, please, and then we can have a chat. Thanks very much. Scott is definitely on the run. Right, well, time again now. I've left a message to say that, obviously, it's not going to go away. Police will continue to come to his address until he's arrested. Pressure's on him now, really. He's probably going to want to come back and get it sorted. Turn so we'll give him, soon, give him a little yeah. bit of time. And I'll try him again in a couple of minutes. If he doesn't answer his phone then, we are potentially going to have to get an arrest package put in overnight. Like a warrant? Sherilyn calls her office to check if Lazenby said anything to the victim that will help the police to trace him. I just need to ask, because we've obviously come to his address and he's not in, is there anything she knows about him, family members, where he might have said he was going today? Football practice at nine. All, all he said to her was that he'd got for football training this morning, but he, she's saying he's been quite vague around what personal details he's ever given to her. He plays if the car's close to his chest. Lazenby is still not returning Sherilyn's calls, so Obviously. the team travel 40 minutes north to Paddyham, on the edge of Burnley. We've now received information um, that we think he possibly is playing football in a nearby town in Paddyham. Oh, they coming to the football game? That's even more negative than work. Uh, which These also would show friends. connection to what the victim has said. Because it's quite a large area <coughs> um, and, it's, and it's a wooded area, we're going to get a dog patrol to be on standby in case he is there and he runs away. Um, and we'll go and see if he's there. Yo, this is... Imagine going to go play football with your, with your friends and this happening? I'm going to suddenly just run off the pitch, is he? Playing football well, you'd, you'd hope not. We're after all I call uh, Scott Lazenby. Who's here tonight? No, I've never even heard him. He's got, he's got like, quite sticky out ears. No. No. Ultimately, what we've got to do is... We've got to find him, haven't we? It, end it there. It, it's a rapist at large, isn't it? Yeah, Although he's not at the football ground, Sherilyn does get some positive news. The suspect, Scott Lazenby, has returned her call. I do need to speak to you urgently at the police station. What's going to happen until I do come face to face with you? This patrol's going to be looking for you all night. And I don't want to get your family in Stoke involved, and I don't want to get your work involved, and I don't want to get your friends involved. So it's your interest. Just. I'm back tomorrow, I can come and see you tomorrow. Well, where are you? Where are you? What now? Yeah. I'm at home. In where? I'm with my parents. In Stoke? Yeah, I've had a drink. I can't drive anyway. You can't drive? Right, because what, what could happen is I could end up saying... Now nah, you're talking about some I had a drink, I can't drive. Now you want to follow the laws. And then a patrol around to your parents' addresses, which I don't particularly want to do, and we would have to bring you from your parents' address to, 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 um, to me. Is it that serious that you need to speak to me right now? Yeah. Yeah, it is. You know what you did, man. If you're not in Stoke and you're lying to me, I will check this out. I will know. All right, I'm going to know if you're in Stoke or not. So if you're telling me lies now, it's not a good start. I think he's panicking a little bit. He's saying he doesn't know why the police need to speak to him. He's told me that he's not available tonight because he's had a drink and he's in Stoke. Um, but he has said he'll come in for 9 o'clock in the morning to Green Bank Police Station and come and speak to us. Fingers crossed, if we don't catch him before now, we'll get him at 9 in the morning. Oh. I ain't gonna lie, this is a little spicy episode, ain't it? Blackburn, a little spice on it. Lancashire. My bad. Detective Sergeant Sharon <coughs> Hamilton and her team are investigating an allegation that a young mother was raped in her own home by a man she met on a dating website. He'd used his right hand and he'd actually started to put it behind my head. He was pulling on my hair and he kind of locked my neck, my head backwards, my neck were locked. He'd managed to take my clothes off. And in just a second, I just felt this horrible pain just go straight through my body and my head kind of like went up to the wall. He'd pushed me up that far. And I just screamed and screamed, and every time I shouted no, it just got louder and louder and louder. The suspect, Scott Lazenby, is expected to hand himself in to be questioned. I don't want to make any comments. Oh, you said Sherilyn upstairs in people. Oh, what I just heard. So you. I'm expecting a Scott Lazenby to arrive at um, nine o'clock. 
Although he doesn't know why he's been asked to come in, you know why. Lazenby has brought a lawyer. Oh, yeah. He's, got he's, got. Yeah. he's never at any point been told he's been arrested, has he? Still. Yeah, I did tell him it was serious. Hi. Um, is it Scott? Yes. Yeah. yeah, all right. I'm just going to explain, obviously, what's going to happen now. All right, this officer's going to arrest you. Scott, you're under arrest on suspicion of rape. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioning something which you later line in court. I'm not going to ask you any questions now, OK? Obviously, you've got your solicitor here. You look clearly look a little bit shocked about the allegation. Yeah, I need to hear his side, bro. Look, it's j today we're just looking to get your account. Clearly, there's two sides. He looks too shocked. Going. OK. Right, OK. I've never met you before. OK. We're going to walk through. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. We're going to walk through. I'm not going to put handcuffs on you. All right? OK. You want to just finish your apple? I ain't even hungry no more after that type of allegation towards... He shouldn't even be hungry. Sergeant, this gentleman's been uh, arrested uh, in an allegation of rape. The circumstances being on the 7th of November in the evening, this gentleman is said to have attended an address whereby... The complainant states this gentleman has anally and vaginally raped her. He is shocked about the charges that are brought against him. He said, wait, both? That's tough. Okay. I'm ringing just to update you, as I said I would yesterday. I Scott's need to hear this side. Okay, so he's currently at with, with the police station with us. So what will happen now is we'll be interviewing him to get his account. Just based off her side alone? he bogus you know what i'm saying but that's just his side though her side because i have friends that have been in this situation two african-american friends that have been in this situation um it it it, it matters in this story um <coughs> where they were accused of the r word and later the both both times later both women brought it back and said that wasn't the case they were just you know what i'm saying one of them, their father walked in, and that's the that's what she claimed was happening. That's what she yelled because she didn't want to embarrass her father, and that she was with a black dude. The other one was um, she had a boyfriend, and he found out or something, and then she she was just trying to cover her tracks. But both of them took it all the way to court. I'm talking there was trials for the. <coughs> <coughs> We're finally <coughs> the truth was admitted. What he's going to say, and then we'll we obviously continue with our investigation. So I'll let you know. It's going to be late, a lot later on today, but I will let you know what's going to happen. Whether there's there's a few options. He, he may be charged. He may go out on bail. That's why I'd be okay. skeptical when I, I hear will, it. But whatever I do, happens, I will make sure you that you're that aware before we release him. Detectives will question Scott Lazenby under caution. The interview will play a key part in determining whether or not he will be charged with rape. Blackpool looks fun at night. 25 miles away, in Blackpool, police respond to an urgent call. Can you attend Central Drive, please? We've got a stab in there at the moment. A man has collapsed outside a flat near the town centre. I'm 100% genuinely not surprised that this has happened in Blackpool. We've done so many documentaries, I've heard so much. <coughs> Observe, stay safe, principal, in case a weapon is involved. The victims rush to hospital in critical condition, suffering with multiple stab wounds. Tragically, he did not survive the ah, night. RIP. So we investigating the M on here and everything? The next morning, the police launch a major murder investigation led by Detective Superintendent Andy Murphy. Three stab wounds to the left thigh stroke hit, so the front of his body, okay. and one stab wound to the rear left shoulder. 
The suggestion at the moment is that the wound to the thigh has gone through an artery, and that. Ah, uh, yeah, that'll do it. Probably killed. This is a really horrific uh, murder of a, a man who we believe is about 30 years of age who's called Marcin Pawlow. Who? The victim, Marcin Pavlov, was from Poland. Detectives questioned the people who were in the flat with him that night to find out who he was and what happened. The only one who has spoken yeah. basically explains how our deceased has come up from Yorkshire yeah. to spend Christmas with these people here. Everybody in Yorkshire, Yorkshire yeah, with his friends some down crazy in Yorkshire moment. have gone away mm -hmm. and he's arrived on the Yorkshire. train this afternoon. Okay. Okay. And they all know each other because they live in it. They all grew up in a Polish village together. But otherwise, there's no connect connection to Blackpool is a, from Marcin here, other than these pals that he's got. No, it's got two domestic kin, um, a mother and a sister in Poland. OK. And we're in the process of contacting family. Yeah. And that's where we're up to currently. Yes. Messed We've up. arrested people. What the difficulties will be will be to identify who's caused the injuries to Marcin and why. Although police believe they have arrested everyone who was in the flat, the investigation is far from straightforward. All our witnesses are Polish males, um, all of which speak very little English. We know that most of them were drinking on the night in question, so the value of their evidence, first of all, is impaired through that intoxication. And in right. addition to that, the fact that there's a language barrier becomes particularly demanding. Right. Despite these difficulties, the team have discovered there was an argument between Marcin and a mysterious sixth man. As a result of interviewing the initial individuals who were arrested, we now think that Marcin, our victim, left the flat as a result of a dispute. And this dispute was amongst a number of individuals within the flat, but primarily involved a male who we believe is called Robek. Now, what we do know is that Undoubtedly, we think the six <coughs> that address. Yes. And we've only identified five, haven't we? Okay. I suppose the conclusion I'm coming to is we've got another six person. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Who's unidentified? Is that? Bro, are you kidding me? This cough is ridiculous. Man. I've never had a cough in my life last this long. Let me go get some medicine. I'm gonna edit this out. Don't worry about it. Best editor on the platform. Bad. <coughs> I should have went live tonight. Roll back. Yeah. The people that were in the flat on the night that Marcin Pavlov died, but who no longer live there or are connected to the property, are too afraid of the sixth man to identify him. Uh, However, police believe he is called Robek and is very dangerous. From what we've been told, this is a completely disproportionate use of violence towards this person. This guy is pretty obviously a, a real violent person. So you can see it's a dead fast moving investigation. <clears throat> but what I wanted to use at this meeting now is um, an opportunity to show you the CCTV so that you've all got a clear understanding of what we're talking about. Keith, can I, can I ask you please to talk us through the, the CCTV, is that possible? Well, we see our deceased, who obviously stumbles out of the flat, he's up on his feet. Right. Um, right, someone's just called the address to turn right and then <coughs> towards yeah. town. Good. So, there's nobody come out that we haven't identified other than the guy who comes out and turns right. That one person will be Robek. Yeah. Yeah. So they weren't lying about With it. With only the grainy image of Robek's legs to go on, 
Andy is going to the crime scene to look for evidence and get a better understanding of how Marcin died. There's been a dispute as a result of that. Martin and his mate have been thrown out of this house uh, or asked to leave. They walk out. Then Martin, we believe, has gone back and squirted a fire extinguisher in the face of one of the occupants. And then there's been a bit of a, a fight on the stairs. And Martin's gone down the stairs, probably fallen to the floor, we think. And then at that point, we think that Robak has gone up to him and stabbed him and caused the multiple stab wounds, two of which has killed him. From the interviews that we've had are saying that Martin has been pushed down there. And then Robak, he's actually gone down some way, if that is the case, yeah. to go and stab him. Police have found a knife and removed so it for forensic examination. Alone, Matt, so where was the knife found? It was found just here on the arm, <coughs> armchair here. So in terms of significant forensic evidence in here, the knife was obviously the main thing. And then apart from that, all the uh, beer cans that were on the coffee table, which we've swabbed and fingerprinted. Uh -huh. If the forensic team can recover DNA and fingerprints, they may be able to identify the killer. Right. We know from the CCTV camera that Martians literally come straight out of that address, hopped into the middle of the road and collapsed in the middle of the road, and then he's been dragged here prior to going to hospital. It, it's a tragic uh, thought for us to have, really, about what's happened to so Martin in his final minutes wild. of life. A little argument escalated into all of that. With no further evidence to go on, Andy and Dean are no closer to finding the elusive and very dangerous Robek. The fact that he's come over from Poland and he's used to travelling across borders, that there might be a real risk that yeah, he's he avoids us. And he could literally do one, could our man. Wouldn't be surprised if he's not there no more. Could have got up out of there easily. Blackburn, Lancashire. DS Sherilyn <coughs> Martin is investigating <coughs> a date rape allegation. Before questioning the suspect, detectives must be sure of the victim's account. I just kept saying, Scott, just stop it, just stop. I said, just no. And he wouldn't let go of me. He did it for a good few minutes, and then all of a sudden, I don't know where I got it from. I just screamed really loudly. I just screamed, I just shouted. I don't even know what it was. I said, I don't know if it would get off me or what. I just screamed really loudly. So he, he jumped back. And he just kept saying, stop crying, just hug me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, just hug me. I'll make it better to you. But whilst he were doing it, he was laying on top of me and his head was here and whispering it, but he was touching himself. But he was talking to me what and saying, freaky. come on, let's try it again. Let's try it again. I won't eat this time. Come on, come on, don't spoil it. I just said, get out of my house. I said, you just need to go. Now, Detective Constable Ifti Ali will question the suspects. I, I believe her story, but he's just, he was just overly shocked. But you know, I guess he didn't think nobody was going to tell. Scott Lazenby. <coughs> Let's hear it, Scott. Inconsistencies in his version of events. If we can get quite a, a good detailed account from him, if we do that now, then at some stage later on down the line, deviating, him deviating from that account will show that, that he's got the propensity to have maybe, maybe, uh, have lied to us on his first account. I, I've driven over there, I've got there around 8pm. We stayed downstairs for about an hour, we were kissing, joking, laughing. One thing leads to another and she says, let's take this upstairs. So, so she led me upstairs. Um, she got into bed, um, I got into bed. Um, they start kissing, cuddling, uh, um, taking clothes off. Yeah, we're having sex and then we, we change position and we go to have anal sex and um, I, I, I was too fast and she didn't like it so she got upset. She said stop so I stopped. Um, we, we stop, we, t we talk, um, at this point she's quite upset and I'm saying, you know, just calm down, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be so forceful in that, in that sense. Um, you know, give me a cuddle, I'm sorry. Well, for Nessie, that is also very believable now. Oh man, oh man, we gotta go to court. We gotta go to court, because I, I don't know now. But that's a believable story as well. Definitely. <clears throat> but we just got to see when we ask later down the road 
is he going to be consistent? With a lot of serious sexual cases, it tends to be just two people involved. Um, and it's done in a private location. It's um, done away from anybody else. It, it's really difficult because there only is the two people there. And ultimately, it's only those two people that know, right. you know, what the truth is. Lazenby tells the police he lives with a woman he met through the same dating website he met the victim on. So you was outside cheating. Okay. The plot thickens. I do um, live with a friend throughout the week. I, a friend. I met her off Plenty of Fish. She was probably the first person I did meet off there uh, many, you know, many years ago. And um, I now live with her and her children. Uh, so what's the living arrangement, guys? We're friends and we have had sexual uh, relationships before. Then y'all not friends. Now we are just friends. Friends with benefits. The suspect has got his vehicle at the police station, so we're going to do a search on that. A search of Lazenby's car reveals a receipt that appears to contradict his account of his whereabouts. McDonald's. So there's been the Paddy Mary this morning. Um, not in Stoke, as he said last night. You look like you've got some goodies. Yeah, some goodies um, he definitely wasn't in Stoke last night. Confirm that. That's irrelevant. Stoke last night. Lambertson Butler, he buys them at Tesco, Paddy. Oh, Paddy and. Paddy. So if he was coming from Stoke. Why would he be in Paddy? We're looking at his inconsistencies. If he's telling us where he's been, we need to check that. We need to check alibis. We need to check the address where he's saying he's been living in, in the local area. We need to check that's correct. Now the team know that Lazenby lied to them, uh, Detective Constable Ifti Ali wants to challenge him further. Yeah, I'm trying to see if he's altogether a liar. And when the sergeant spoke to you, she asked you where you were, yeah. you clearly said, I'm in Stoke. First, at first she said, yeah, I'm at my parents, and then you said, no, 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 I'm not at my parents, I'm in Stoke, but I'm not at my parents. So, you know, there's a couple of lies there, there straight is, away. There is, there is, and it's not the fact that I lied intentionally or anything like that. It's just the fact well, that I was really scared, you know, and I didn't understand what you were calling me for. I didn't realise it was so serious. Lied about something that is quite key. So that clearly shows us yes. or gives us the view that you've yeah. got the propensity mm. to lie. Yes. So we speak to him about and we, uh, we ask him, you know, What's your living arrangements? Yeah, yeah, we are just friends and, and so on. And we are, we're questioning him a little bit more on that. And we ask him about his sexual relationship with the And he basically says, well, I don't think that's got anything to do with it. That's got nothing to do with this case. Well, well we're asking you because it's important if you're having sex with And your partner, oh, no, she's not my partner. She's just, we're just friends. He's going to be asked about your relationship. <coughs> is your lo is his lawyer <coughs> is his lawyer no longer present or what? What it is? I just don't understand why this is, you know, this is relevant. You're shaking your head from side to side. This is clearly distressing me. We just like to know the truth. It's not, I've not lied to you about this. You are still in a sexual relationship with. <sighs> Yeah, what friends with benefits. It's clear as day. I'm not. It's, it's a simple question. Yeah, but I. Yeah, but I. D I'm not lying about what happened on that night. Either. Okay. Are you still in a sexual relationship with? <sighs> yes. So why did you lie to us? Well, I did. I just didn't feel it was relevant. What's your relationship? It's kind of not. Have, we have quite an open relationship. So we um, lied at, on the first interview. Yeah. We, Panic mode starts to set in a little bit more. Well, no, no, we are in an open relationship, but she's Where's not going to see at? it like an open relationship. The team are suspicious of Lazenby's account, but frustratingly for them, they don't at this stage have enough evidence to charge. He'll be placed on police bail, but forbidden to contact the victim in any way. Those conditions are there to protect the victim in this I case. I don't know if he's going to... So far, what I've had from him has been um, several lies. So you question mark a lot of what he's saying, is it the truth or not? So that's, that's exactly what we need to find out, who, who is <coughs> saying the truth. Excuse me, man. Releasing Scott Lazenby is a risk. If he is a rapist, he could attack again. In Blackpool, 
Detectives Still investigating the death of Marcin Pavlov want to trace a Polish man called Robek. But they've now learned that their suspect also uses the name Sebastian. The key line for us is to get hold of Sebastian, who was originally referred to as Robak. And you know what makes me even more concerned is the fact that the suspects that we've currently got in custody are, are all really worried about telling us about this individual. So that it, it demonstrates some real fear within that group. Two witnesses say that he's responsible for the murder of Martin. This guy's obviously de de deadly violent. So the plan moving forward, Nick, is for us to have a manhunt with regard to Rob, whatever you call him, Sebastian. Yeah. OK. Right, Nick, yeah. if you can get him... I'll do my best. Nick, that would be great. OK, thanks, everyone. The team visit a woman they believe might be the girlfriend of their suspect. No surprise they're going on a manhunt. This man is committed an M. They got to go hunt him like this. They got to catch that man. We need some more details about him. Really. No one seems to be giving us any more. She's not giving us enough details. There's no suggestion that the woman has done anything wrong. But detectives keep her under surveillance and track the calls on her mobile phone. To compound the team's frustration, the only image of the suspect that they have is of his feet leaving the crime scene. No image at all. But the detectives have been piecing together a CCTV trail to establish his movements after the stabbing. Uh, he got One a of the hoodie witnesses on, on, on interview, he basically puts himself in company with the offender post-incident post uh, and going to a brothel on Cookson Street. So we're getting that brothel identified. It's then allowed us uh, or given us another CCTV opportunity. So with this links into the CCTV image here and what the police inquiry says, this individual here is that male there. That's all I hear it say. And there's another new lead. An associate of Sebastian has told the police that he is a member of a local gym. Oh, no. He said that he hasn't seen him for two months. He didn't <coughs> bump into him either at the gym or just out on the street and they'd have a beer with him. We now know from a witness that he attended a local gym. We've been inquiries at that gym and we've recovered a membership card. So we're quite satisfied now that the individual called Robek has been going by the name of Wojciech Sabic. The police have also recovered the application form for the gym membership. Fingerprints from that application form match fingerprints within the scene, particularly on beer cans that we think the male known as Robek was handling. So now there's a clear link between Robek being the same person, or at least a person who uses the details of Wojciech Sabic. Police now have a third alias for Marcin's killer. It's becoming clear that they're dealing with a criminal who is used to deliberately covering his tracks. Yeah, he's a veteran at this. In addition to this, Undercover officers have had a tip-off about a person who may have assisted the killer in escaping. We're just going now to uh, an address up to uh, effect the arrest of a gentleman who we believe has assisted the offender in leaving the country. <coughs> oh, he gone? Hello, police. Can you help with up? Officers they give are them a chance to get They to quickly the apprehend the man who may have helped their suspect to leave Blackpool. He's brought into police custody. Do you understand why you're here? Not really. No. The allegation is that someone that we believe has been involved in a murder, yeah, okay, yeah. you've driven them to the airport yeah. to enable them to get out of the country. The allegation right, is that you've right. done that. You've what we call assisted an offender in okay. an ongoing... Okay. But he could be plausible deniability. I know what he did. I did. He, he called me. He said he needed a ride to the airport. I took him to the airport. That's what friends do. Plausible deniability. Fiery. As long as he ain't tell them nothing. Significantly, we've had an individual now who um, we think the evening after the offence took our main suspect, Sabiz, to the airport. Okay, this way, please, sir. So that does now present us with a new hypothesis that our suspect may have travelled out of the country, fled the country, and that does obviously make things a bit more difficult in terms of securing his arrest. But it now appears that the man arrested didn't help the suspect Still escape about 13 abroad. minutes, so... He asked me to do him a favor and take him to the airport. He received a text message to say his plane had already gone. 
he gives me a postcode and said, can I get him to this place? It was just like a street with shops and we stopped. I don't know what the name of the place was, but that's the last time I saw him. So Marcin Pavlov's killer could still be here in the UK. Oh. There's no trace of him on the details that we've been given with the spelling and the date of birth. But what is interesting, the, the airport lads know the area very well, and they said from the CCTV, it's actually gone past the airport and into Leicestershire area. Right. Now that fits. Further checks on the mobile phone of the suspect's girlfriend appear to show calls to a number in Leicestershire. Convinced he has got a flight then. Uh, at the risk of putting all her eggs in one basket, it looks like that she's suddenly in contact with someone down there, so I'm, I'm quite enthusiastic about that, really. This piece of information could be key to finding Marcin's killer. It's going to be a manhunt, and there's a whole host of tactics, strategies, that are now going to be employed to get this individual. The urgency, for me, is around the harm that that individual has the potential to cause to other people. True, he is that, but he really know how to maneuver too. It looked like this might not be his first time. <coughs> Sheriff Horton <coughs> is investigating the rape of a young Excuse mother. Me. She had to release the suspect Scott Lazenby on bail. She's concerned that if guilty, he could reoffend. But news from colleagues in Greater Manchester Police could be the breakthrough her team needs. He committed a very, very similar uh, offence on the 3rd of November. He's committed something very, very similar to another Three days female prior? who's about, aged about the same, who also has a, a young child, so it looks like he's preying on sort of these vulnerable females. Again, through plenty of fish, he's contacted her, built up a relationship, and then she's invited him around to his address, um, where then he sexually assaulted her. Even though she's got an eight-month child on her lap, basically puts his hand into her top and touches her breast um, under her bra. So oh, yeah, at that he's... point, she's told him to get out. She's still holding the baby at the time, uh, which is even more worrying. She's told him to get out. She's walked to the front door, um, opened the door, he's turned around wild. to get out again, and he's actually got his penis out in his hand and he's masturbating on a settee. He's denied it. Um, he said there was no sexual contact whatsoever. But interestingly, if he was meant to be meeting this female to build a relationship up, he was only there for a matter of minutes before she told him to get out. This person has committed almost um, an identical offence. Um, his MO is exactly the same. He's met online, he's gone round to <coughs> a female's house. Both females in this instance had children. These two women don't know each other, so what are the chances in a five-day period, two women who don't know each other being exploited in their own home? OK, John, so in relation to suspect, he's due back on police bail on the 8th of February. So from my understanding, we we're pretty much file ready now to go to see the Crown prosecution. There's two offences here committed in, within five days of each other of somebody that's already said on interview, he's already met at least 30 to 40 women online. So it is concerning. I do want to expedite it. I do want to get this guy back on bail on the 8th of February. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be in a position on the 8th of February where we're going to be charging and getting the right result for the victim in this case. In Blackpool, detectives have been desperately trying to track the elusive and dangerous killer of Marcin Pavlov, who was brutally stabbed to death. The team understands that their suspect, Sobish, goes by a number of different fake names. They have been tracking calls on his girlfriend's phone and now have a list of addresses they need to check in Leicestershire. We've identified an address in the town centre, um, we believe uh, may be connected to this incident in Blackpool. Hello, I have to worry about it. Do you want to come in and have a quick chat? Yes. Is anyone else Damn, in the house? They're having a rave. Oh, okay. We're at your door, so we just have to come in and chat. There's yes. no real adults. Are you the only one here? We're looking for somebody that we need to speak to. Can I get a note call? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the details. Yeah, chat. Don't have come out. Come through to the back. Yes, 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 yes. yes. The woman at the house owns the mobile phone that Sobish's girlfriend has been contacting. Do you know anybody in the back door earlier? Yes. Okay. Does she have a boyfriend? I don't know. 
Maybe. Yes, yes, she has a boyfriend, Daniel. Daniel, yeah. <coughs> the fact that she knows the suspect as Daniel becomes a key clue for the police. The suspect has been using a variety of aliases, but Interpol have finally confirmed his true identity. What is it? Daniel Sobish, and he is well known to them. There he is. The information we've had via Interpol from the Polish authorities is confirmation now of the actual identity of our suspect, and we've done that by providing them with the fingerprints from the scene, the fingerprints from the application form on the gym. Six convictions, theft using violence or weapons, which is obviously what we call robbery. The reason why he's on record in Poland is because he has committed previous offences over there, um, I believe some violent offences. And according to this, he was quite a prolific burglar. He's got quite a few for burglary. He's a petty thief. <coughs> petty crime. The team hope they can find their suspect by continuing to monitor the phone belonging to his girlfriend. This is her incoming data. So these are all the numbers and texts that have rung into her phone. Once we identified a mobile phone that he was utilising, we do a lot of inquiries around the telephony to try and locate where that phone might be operating from. Fifteen undercover officers are now assigned to various addresses in Leicestershire to try and close the net on Sobish. Yeah, two more people have just uh, entered that premises. Stocky male with a bald head and an uh, older male. Uh, Steve, just a quick one, a uh, heads up. We might have an address for our suspect in Loughborough that we um, we might be able to connect him to. Girlfriend is in now in communication with a, a mobile phone which subscribes to an address in Loughborough. I don't want to just go and knock on the door and miss him. I'd rather give ourselves an opportunity to see if there's some comings and goings and either, you know, confirm if he's knocking about then then we'll just <coughs> really. Can you speak English? The Loughborough connection is a dead end. There's no sign of Sobish there. But there's a new lead to a property in Leicester. Police! Empty, of course. There was people in there? After a four-week search for Marchin's elusive killer, involving a series of raids on numerous addresses, Officers believe they have finally got their man. Yeah, whatever you are. Okay. Okay, so why is this gentleman here? Uh, he's been transferred from Leicester, Sergeant. Um, he's been arrested on behalf of ourselves and suspicion of murder. Okay. Okay, do you speak English? No. No. Okay. Just can you simply confirm your name? Proszę potwierdzić to imię i nazwisko. Sobisz Daniel. Sobisz Daniel. Yeah. Whiskey Alpha 0093-16. I've come down to the custody office to conduct interviews with the suspect. Uh, we're going to put our challenges to him. And once we've done that, we'll, we'll make a decision whether we go to CPS or whether we need to come back and do further interviews. Have you booked us outside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Okay, you know this is huh? mm -hmm. murder, Marcin Paolo, on the 23rd of December. Yeah. No. Two days before Christmas is wild. When questioned, Daniel Sobish admits he was at the flat but denies involvement with the stabbing. Three witnesses are all saying there was a heated argument between you and the man who's murdered. Is that why you killed this man? He's just saying it hasn't happened to the, the, the nephew of And he's just kept strong about everybody. And he's not known that they've turned on him. Right. And they've breached the code. So he's a little bit pissed off, to say the least. Despite Sobish's denials, detectives are confident about the case against him. A witness has made a statement saying that Sobish spoke to him after the stabbing. Tony, do you want to give us the headlines? He says that he sits next to him um, and he says, I've killed a man, or I think I've killed a man. 
Yeah, you're out of there, man. They will say that when he arrived, he's had blood stains. <coughs> And he also. I feel like if you commit a crime like that, you in it by yourself. Don't don't go around talking. Says uh, that during the conversation, he said that he fucked him up with a knife. And he says the knife went in like butter. Well, the significant thing for me is that is that is that is that line that I've I've fucked him up with a, with, a, with, a, with a knife, which is. How about the line where he said it went in like butter? Quite dumbing, I think. Yeah. We'll go sleep, guys. Because now, now you can't go down for manslaughter. You're getting a straight M. I think the only reason to stop hanging around now. In order to charge Sobish, the police must get authorization from the Crown Prosecution Service. OK, no worries. Within hours, the available evidence has been reviewed and a decision made. What they do? OK, thanks, Julie. They got what they Right, give authorised charge of murder. Good work, mate. Brilliant. Right, I'll put the charges in there. Right, because you do with trying to get the family notified. Right, okay. Right, I'll get the charges put in. Okay. I can pause recording? Since when can I do that? It say stop recording or pause recording. So now when I get up, I can just press pause when I'm recording and then come back. And... That's heat. So it looked like I'm which I am the best editor on the platform. That's tough. We're absolutely overjoyed to have located this individual. The real value when I think we sit back as police officers and think, OK, why, 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 why do we feel good about this? It's because we feel that we've delivered. He looked like a cop. He couldn't have been no other job except a cop or like a the mayor or something. His head is shaped like a cop or a mayor. Something mayor to head. the victim. <coughs> that he actually to receive some justice. Right, Daniel. Okay, the charge is a charge of murder, and that is on the 23rd of December 2015. Christmas Emma. At Blackpool, murdered Marcin Pavlov, which is contrary to common law. I kind of looked at him and we had him kind of like built up on a, on a pedestal, you know, a bit of a bodybuilder type and a real kind of like danger and threat to the public. And yeah, that, that, that that's definitely was the case, but in custody, it looked like he was a defeated man. It was almost as if, you know, it was just kind of like game over for him. It's always game over when you get caught for him. It's good, you're done. <laughs> Daniel Sobish was convicted of the manslaughter of Marcin Pavlov. They gave him manslaughter and given a prison sentence of 13 years. They gave him manslaughter. They did give him that, okay. In the <coughs> action, Scott Lazenby has been brought into the police station to be charged with sexual assault. And they took his down from an R to an SA. Myself and my team have done um, an extensive, thorough investigation. Um, I suppose on the day, it's gonna come down to those 12 jury members, but I'm confident in my ability, my team's ability that we've put forward a strong case. After a four-day trial, four? Lazenby was convicted of the rape and sexual assault of two women. Oh, okay. He was jailed for seven years. But he's not going to have an easy time in jail either. He's going to have the roughest time in there. And prohibited from using dating websites for 13 years. As soon as she said to me, he's been found guilty, I just, I, I could breathe. I just felt I could breathe. And I just felt so relieved that it were done. It were all over. Well, that's tough, man. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm glad we watched that one. It was fairly entertaining, I guess, for lack of a better word. I'm gone.